Hello, this is Bob with Bob CNC, and this is going to be a tutorial on Estelcam software. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be doing what I do most of the time, and that is making G code files out of DXF files or CAD model files. As a matter of fact, I'll be making some G code here, or at least showing you how to, on a project that I'm working on. So if I go up here and I say file open, it's going to take me to some layouts that I've worked on. And I'm going to go ahead and open uh, KL7 layout 1. First thing it's going to ask me is units. And I actually model in millimeters, so I'll choose millimeters. Now, first thing you're going to notice is I have a layout, and there's a lot of G-code here. Now, I'm not going to try to accomplish all of this on the video today, but I do want to show you a few things. Uh, first of all, if you come up here, you can say the work area. Now, my work area is 5 foot by 4 foot. It's in inches, and that's really where this box is uh, around. So I'll change that so you can see what it is. So if I just said 12 inches here, you can see that's what it's going to do. It's going to show you where your work area is. So I'll go ahead and change that to 48 inches by 5 feet. Okay. The next thing that I want you to notice is if I zoom in here, this is the zero point of where this uh, file starts. So I may want to move that over just a little bit so that I'm on the board. And this is a tight fit, so uh, I'll just leave it there. All right. So the next thing that I'm going to do is start creating toolpaths. Holes are on the inside of the line, and part is on the outside of the line. So let's go ahead and do some inside of the line pieces first. Now you can actually fill in all the parameters. I like to do it at the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and click all of these holes in this part. And I'm going to cut all of these all the way through except for these two here. Now once I get those done, I can select them all, and I can say we're going to cut those a half inch deep. And here, uh, notice I'm cutting uh, a little bit thin. My bit's actually 0.125, but to make these fit, I cut them a little bit thin. I'm actually uh, doing 0.14 inches per pass. I'm actually starting to angle in my cut. I'm cutting at 130. Or, I'm sorry, 120 inches per minute, and my plunge rate is 30 inches per minute. My RPM, the spindle is set at 18,000. Okay, so this is all I need to do for that, and then I could say that I've done. Notice it has them now in a different color. Now I'm going to go to the outside of the line. I'll click that, and again, I'm going to go to 0.5, and I want to make some tabs. I'm going to say make them 0.1 long and 0.1 deep. And then I need to go ahead and figure out how I'm going to hold this. So I'll hold it here and maybe there and maybe there, which is really a bad choice since I'm so close to the edge. But for this, it will work fine. But you can see how it actually put those in there. If I don't want them, I can click on it again and, and do that. Okay. The other thing, and I really love about Estelcam, is for my design, this won't work for a tab and slot. So it has an overcut that it automatically, if I poke around here, it will pick for me. And see, it'll create a little toolpath from here to here to make sure that I get that sharp corner. See, uh, the thing again, that I would want to do those all by hand, it has some automatic functions. So I can just say add corner slots. And now it picks all of them. I can say, OK. Now if I zoom in, you'll see that it's put all of those in there. OK, so there's that piece. Let's go on to uh, a different piece. Uh, let's say that I want to cut this out, but this part's only a few millimeters deep. These are only a few millimeters deep. So now I can say I want to cut a hole here, but I want to pocket it. I have different pocket strategies, and you can read about those, but the one I have selected is fine. So I pick that one. I say pocket. And then I want to pick this one, but notice sometimes it doesn't pick the right one. But if I get it to pick the one, I can do the same thing and say pocket. Now, again, I can go back and I can select all of them and say, I just want this to be 0.1 deep. Okay, now make me a hole. 
I want it to be 0.5 deep. And then, of course, I will take the outside, and I want that to be 0.5 deep. And I need to make it to where it's held down. There you go. That's the second uh, thing that I love about Estokim is pockets are just really easy. Uh, and also the hold downs are easy. Now I'm going to uh, do something that's a little bit more complicated. And you will see. I want to start off by the easy part. We'll just do the holds. So here we are doing holds. And again, I'll select them all. I could have uh, actually picked the depth one at a time, but I didn't. Uh, now I'm going to run into an issue because I want to do the outside of the part, but it doesn't want to follow the line that I want to. I don't want this cut here. I want it to just go straight. So what do I do? Instead of the gears here, I select the dot. Once I select the dot, I can zoom in and go right past that and start clicking around. Now notice that it kind of has an idea of where it wants to go and I can even probably go to this setting over here but instead of the left click I click the right mouse button and it will follow the toolpath that it was selecting there. Again right click now I can go back to uh, left click and then over here right click and again there's my toolpath. It just skipped over these vectors here so this is going to be a 0.5 cut. Now I'm going to do the same thing, except for this time I want it on the inside of the line. I'm going to, instead of my gear, because it's saying I can't figure out what vector you want me to cut, I'm going to click the dot. And now I get to choose. So I'm going to go here, all the way across those features, down to here, and then back up. And I'm going to pocket that out. And I think that one's supposed to be 0.16. And then I am going to create one more tool path here. I'm going to come up here, over, right click, left click, right click, right click. Notice this pull path here, and I can pocket that. I can also add my overcuts if I needed to, give it a depth. And we would be set. One more piece here, just to show you one more time. It's an inside hole. I'm going to have to do it by hand. Now, once I created all of these tool paths, I would be able to uh, save the G code file and give it a name and there you go there's my toolpath file now if I angle this around you can see how many uh, cuts I have you can also see that it's angling in it's not actually just plunging but every time it uh, starts to cut it throws an angle you can also see the overcuts here as it takes out that corner point for us so that is one of the things that I use the most in Estelchem. It is what I use to make our uh, G-code files uh, when we're cutting with the router. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this. hope it's been informative. If you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, email us at helpdesk at bobcnc. Uh, this is the last tutorial on Estelchem. It does have some more features uh, that are more in-depth, but I'll let you guys explore those on your own. So thanks for watching and have a good day.